Hello everyone I welcome you all for Sanmugam IAS Academy and I also welcome you for this current events of the day let us take up the topics for today's discussion we are having almost five topics to be discussed for today's current events uh, first one is Mahendra Giri Biosphere Reserve pre-pack insolvency resolution Trifod launches uh, Sankalp Se Siddhi a new initiative uh, which is going to be implemented in the tribal villages oxygen enrichment unit opium production so these are all the five things the first one what is our government proposes mahendra giri biosphere reserve so we know we know that what is biosphere reserve what is biodiversity hotspot and we are having more than 400 bio, biosphere reserves in india so in odisha they are going to implement and announce a new biosphere reserve that is known as mahendra giri biosphere reserve it is the second biosphere reserve in the state and it is situated in the southern part of the state at mahendra giri hill ecosystem uh, simlipal biosphere reserve was the odisha's first such reserve so uh, this, this was the one thing which has been announced to be the first one in odisha to be the biosphere reserve mahendra giri biosphere reserve is a hill mountain which is located in odisha the area of proposed biosphere reserve is spread over gajapadi and ganjam districts in eastern ghats transition zone so we have different zones transition zones core zones uh, buffer zone so there are so many zones in the biosphere reserves and biodiversity hotspots please be focused uh, on the zones please study about the zones how these zones are being classified how wh- what kind of activities are allowed in this zone what is the main thing uh, in the core zone what is the main thing in the buffer zone likewise we have to study so here a transition zone the hill ecosystem act as the transitional zone between the flora and fauna of southern india and the himalayas so they act as a transitional zone between the flora and fauna of the southern india consequently the region is an ecological estuary of genetic diversity so estuary in the sense it will be having much amount of bio- biodiversity the plants birds and animals will be so much higher in this estuary the populations of microorganisms and each and every living matter will be very higher in this estuary the hill has water streams and the origin of mahendra mahendra danya river so there is also a river called mahendra danya river in that place the vegetation also so much higher the types of salt forest mixed forest grassland and scrubs also existing in that place uh, tribes such as kanda tribe and saura tribe the saura tribe is particularly vulnerable tribal group who all are existing in that place so it is important for us to have uh, for us to know what kind of tribes are existing over there and what what kind of tribal people are protected and who all are being under the vulnerable condition here saura tribe are present over there next the flora the 41 species uh, present over there are having uh, some kind of medicinal values out of 29s of its having the place of threatened medicinal plants the category they comes under called threatened medicinal plants of odisha are found in the proposed biosphere reserve area so this place mahendra giri biosphere reserve has a 49 41 medicinal species out of 29 of which having that threatened category fauna the indian elephant is the most important animal of uh, mahendra giri so indian elephant also present there the other wild animals include tiger leopard hyena wild bear deer antelope antelope is also a kind of deer you can see that peacock and snake so please have a note on it how, how these uh, things are classified how this ecosystem is being classified in this mahendra giri magri biosphere reserve in odisha next ibc amendment ordinance 2021 allows pre pack insolvency resolution so what is ibc insolvency and bankruptcy code Uh, this is an ordinance so we have discussed earlier what is ordinance uh, ibc amendment ordinance uh, 2021 amends the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 the amendment allow the use of 
pre-packaged insolvency resolution as an alternative resolution mechanism for MSMEs. So MSMEs in the sense micro, small, medium enterprises. So here we have to discuss what is pre-packed insolvency resolution. A pre-packed resolution is a form of restructuring that allows the creditors and debtors to work on a formal instead of formal it is an informal thing so it is an informal plan which uh, engages this creditor and debtors to submit an approval for the uh, project they are doing so under this system a uh, financial creditors will agree to the terms of potential investors so there will be some creditors who will be giving money for the work so in which we will be having the potential investors uh, in, in, the pot, in, the, in, in the creditors we will be having a potential investor for uh, they will seek approval of the resolution plan from the national company law tribunal so nclt so nclt will be giving the approval for this uh, pro progression however the resolution plan cannot be submitted directly to the nclt it requires approval of a minimum 66 percentage of the financial creditors if there is 100 percentage uh, of creditors in which 66 percentage of the creditors should give approval that are unrelated to the corporate debtor before submission of the resolution plan so here they are submitting a resolution plan in which we will be having the creditors and debtors and also we will be having a, a potential investor we have to seek approval from that potential investor and we also seek the NCLT, NCLT approval and this NCLT approval will not be giving the approval directly instead of that it will be seek the approval from the 66 percentage of the potential investors creditors so based on this this uh, submission will be and the resolution will be taking place what is the benefits of this pre packs a uh, quicker resolution in contrast the pre pack resolution process is limited to a maximum of 120 days so it is 120 days worth of it further only 90 days are available to the stakeholders to bring the resolution plan to the nclt so it will be engaging and boosting up the uh, financial uh, assistance of the government. Uh, next one, this is an interesting topic to be discussed today. Trifat launches Sankalp Se Siddhi, a village and digital connect drive. So Trifat is a tribal cooperative marketing development federation of India. It launches a scheme called Sankalp Se Siddhi, a village and digital connect so Sankap Sissidi initiative is aims to activate the Vandan Vikas Kantras. So Vandan Vikas Kantras are an initiative which are going to be implemented in the tribal villages. So let us discuss the future of this. Under the initiative 150 teams uh, will be visiting 10 villages each. So each of them will be visiting uh, this uh, selected 10 villages. Thus, 100 villages in each region and 1,500 villages in country will be covered in 100 days. Uh, that is why we are having 150 teams to be covered this uh, uh, required achievement. The visiting teams will identify the locations and shortlist potential Vandan Vikas Kantras for clustering as uh, tri food and Smriti units as larger enterprises. So, we are going to improve the potential ability of the uh, tribal people and we are going to implement improve this uh, standard of living of this tribal people through the implementation of this project called this tri food and sruti through the implementation of the initiative known vandan uh, vikas kantras so about vandan yojana it was launched in 2018 it is program uh, for uh, value addition branding and marketing of minor forest producers for that, Vandan Kandras are set up for the creation of sustainable livelihoods for the forest-based tribes. So, it is the plan to develop the standard of living of the forest-based tribal people. The implementing agency is obvious, that is Minister of Tribal Affairs and uh, is a nodal department at the central level. So, TriFed act as a nodal agency at the national level, but the implementing agency is Minister of Tribal Affairs. The TriFood. So, what is TriFood? It is an initiative of Tribal Affairs, Ministry of Tribal Affairs, uh, with the Ministry of Food Processing. Here, we are going to better utilize the value addition through the 
products collected from the forest so we are going to enhance the value for the product uh, products which are collected from the forest so the implementation agency of this is trifid so please have a different look on it because vandan yojana has been implemented by minister of tribal affairs this scheme which is comes under uh, ministry of tribal affairs having another project called as tribal tribe tri food project this tri food project is going to be implemented by tri fed instead of tribal affairs minister of tribal affairs next smriti scheme of fund for registration of traditional industries is a scheme of the ministry of micro small and medium enterprises so it is a, a scheme which is related to the msme under this initiative financial support will be provided for the setting up of traditional industries such as khadi khair will and village industries clusters so here we have to discuss what is the important that is trifid nodal agency so important tribal nodal agency is trifid we have to discuss about it it has been established in 1887 uh, under the administrative control of minister of tribal affairs so it aims to the aims to provide a good price to the products made or collected from the forest by the tribal people so the main objective of this trifid and the tribal ministry is to enhance the living standard of tribal people next csir uh, cm cm eri develops oxygen enrichment unit central mechanical engineering research institute develops an oxygen enrichment unit that could provide crucial support to covid-19 patients so cmeri is an apex research and development institute for mechanical engineering that functions under the csir that is council of scientific and industrial research what is oxygen enrichment unit an oxygen enrichment unit is a device that concentrates the oxygen from the surrounding air see if we are uh, present in the highly nitrogen uh, gas present area so this area we are living in this area in this area we are having high amount of nitrogen it is almost 78 percentage uh, for uh, if you study this area you can I uh, see that oxygen is uh, nitrogen is abundant in the atmosphere it is about 78 percentage so but uh, oxygen is very low compared to the nitrogen so here we need to uh, have some amount of oxygen for our respiration when we are going to the al- al- high altitude where we will be having high amount of nitrogen so we are manufacturing this oxygen enrichment units the concentrated oxygen is delivered to the patients having respiratory disease it is also useful for the medical purposes also so so many diseases uh, the people with the diseases are unable to get oxygen to their blood uh, this is why we are giving directly the oxygen through this oxygen uh, enrichment units uh, the device is useful in remote places homes or hospital like facilities for patients with chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary diseases uh, pulmonary copd is uh lung related disease chronic hypoxemia uh, and pulmonary uh, edema it may also be used as an adjunct treatment for severe sleep apnea in conjunction with continuous positive air pressure unit the oxygen enrichment unit of cmera is indigenous so it has been made indian so in, in india it has been made that is why it is known as indigenous the unit works on the principle of pressure swing adsorption so here we have to note it down what is the mechanism has been used here what is principle has been used in the uh, oxygen enrichment unit is pressure swing adsorption it utilizes zeolite calcium columns to selectively remove nitrogen from air under the certain pressure thereby increasing the oxygen oxygen concentration c in this uh, model we will be using this psa pressure swing adsorption so this uh, principle uh, based on this principle we are going to implement this uh, unit here we will be in this unit we will be having zeolite columns what is the uh, purpose of this zeolite columns it will selectively remove this nitrogen and it will allow this oxygen concentration and it will be increasing that specifically so this is an important thing 
Next one, benefits of this oxygen enrichment unit. This unit is capable of delivering up to 30 liters per meter. Oxygen enriched air. Uh, I'm sorry, it is not uh, meter, it is 30 liters per minute. So LPM, uh, likewise RPM rotation per minute, it is like a L liters per minute oxygen enriched air developed by this unit. The available oxygen enrichment units generally work till 8000 feet from the sea level. That is why I have just told it earlier. We can grow expenditure also. We can go to the high altitudes by using this uh, oxygen enrichment units. Further, this unit will help in high flow of oxygen therapy. So likewise, it will be useful in so many things like uh, curing diseases and enriching the uses of oxygen. Likewise, this is uh, developed by indigenously by the Indian R&D department. So let us move to the next one that is government aims to boost opium production. In Tamil, we used to call this opium as a abini. So it is a it is legally allowed to grow in some countries only. India is one of that country. So in op from opium, we are developing alkaloids. These alkaloids will be useful to cure the uh, persons with disabilities and like diseases and other things. So this opium production has been legalized in India and it is, has been controlled by the department called as Revenue Department in the Finance Ministry. So they are using this uh, method called poppy straw method under this farmer's extract gum by the gum by manually cutting the opium pots. So opium pots in the sense uh, we'll be having cowpea pot, red gram pot, green gram pot. This enclosed area, this seeds will be enclosed by this cover. Uh, naturally so that is what known as pots and selling the gum to the government factories so it is the rule uh, legally finalized by the government in which the produced opm should be sent to the government factories only alkalides are the huge group of a naturally occurring organic compounds so it will be useful uh, and from which we can uh, develop morphine Strychnine, quinine, pedrine, and nicotine. These are all the some of the specific alkaloids which can be used for the medicinal purpose. And hence, the government decided to adopt the public-private partnership also, because uh, government is not only growing; it is allows the private partnerships also to develop these forms. CPS is a mechanized system under which the entire harvest will be cut by the machine and the transfer to the government factories. So even though it is a public-private partnership, here PPP model. So here this um, uh, produced product should be sent to the government uh, factories only. So we are having almost 77 days from today for our uh, prelims 2021 uh, examination. Please be focused and plan your studies. Uh, thank you for watching today's session. Let us meet you on tomorrow's session. Thank you.